continue working on your file from the last movie, or open the file named cityblocksuglights.max if you need to catch up. Earlier you have placed the light pole traffic lights trash can assembly and duplicated it using simple transform commands. You still need to duplicate light poles on their own, not the whole assembly, to have enough poles around the building lots. This time, instead of using simple transform tools like move and rotate, you'll explore a couple of other options. Start with the array tool. It can be quite powerful once you get used to it, although the interface can be intimidating at first. With an object selected, you can open the array dialog from the tools menu. The upper portion is for placement of duplicates, including options for position, rotation, and scale. The bottom portion is where you specify the duplicate type and whether the duplicates span in one, two, or three directions. In the bottom right corner, there's a preview button which is useful to enable. By default, the array is set to span in one direction. This means that by specifying distances in one direction or the other, duplicates start to appear. If you want, you can span duplicates in two directions simultaneously, or even three directions, if you so choose. With that in mind, let's see how you can apply this to the light poles. To avoid confusion, you'll array objects in one direction at a time. In the left view, do a cross selection around the leftmost poles, the ones sort of pointing to the left. Make sure only the poles are selected, but not the traffic lights or the trash cans. The use of selection crossing is so that you select all poles on that depth line. Pan the left view and then press CTRL and cross-select all other poles pointing in the same direction. All poles facing the same way will be arrayed simultaneously. Hover over the top view and press ALT-W to maximize that view. Also press F3 to turn the view to wireframe mode. This is only temporary and makes the selected objects easier to see. With four poles selected, call up the array tool. If you need to, set all position, move values to 0, and the number of duplicates to 10. You will change that in a second. Make sure the clone type is set to instance. This is simply an editable poly object that has no intelligence or wiring like the traffic lights. Enable preview mode. At this time, nothing happens because you have 10 duplicates sitting on top of one another. Change the X move value. Light pools are usually spread about 30 or 40 meters. Reduce the number of clones. Five should work nicely here. You can zoom in and tweak the distance value. 29.95 meters seem to work fine when comparing the last clone with the pole around the bend. Click OK to confirm the changes and exit the dialog. Press ALT-W and go back to the left view. This time, select all poles pointing the opposite way. Go back to a maximized top view. With the new selection, use Array again. Note that the values from earlier are retained, only this time you need the clones to spread from right to left. You can see by clicking Preview that they are still spanning left to right as earlier. Simply change the X value from 2995 to minus 2995 meters. Click OK to confirm. Use the same technique to clone the poles running vertically. To that end, use the front view to make your selection.
but enter the 2995 meter value in the Y position field while zeroing out the X value. Use plus or minus values depending if you are cloning up or down. You still need to fine tune positions as some pools may be falling into the middle of a side street. There are a couple here. And another one there. Simply move these objects a bit to one side or another so that they are safely on the sidewalks. For the smaller inner roads, you can certainly use Array again, or you can alternatively use the Spacing tool. The Spacing tool is arguably easier to use, especially with angled roads such as this one. Merge the Streetlight object from the Urban Components file. When asked, use the scene material as it is already in the scene. In this case, the scene material and the merge material are one and the same, so either option works fine. Move the street lamp closer to the angled road. With the lamp selected, choose Tools Align Spacing Tool. You can also simply press Shift I. Here, you can span duplicates across a spline if you have one, or simply by specifying two points. You can then use a variety of placement methods. The default one works well enough as you can specify a number of clones while keeping an eye on the distance between them. You can also enable the follow option so that the clones align with the direction you specified. If you need to adjust the rotation, do it on the master object, 90 degrees in this case. You will temporarily lose the clones in the viewport, but they reappear as soon as you select the spacing tool window again. Once you're happy with the result, Click the Apply button to confirm the changes. You can repeat the procedure onto other areas by clicking other points and specifying a different number of duplicates. Take a minute to complete the cloning of the streetlights along the inner roads. When you're done, delete the original streetlight you merged into the scene, UDC Streetlight 001. It has now served its purpose as a clone master and can be removed. Save your file. In the next movie, you'll learn to turn objects into primitives for even easier placement.